Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Adobe Live from the UK this fine, fine Monday. I hope wherever you are that you are having a fine day. Of course, if where you are happens to be on YouTube, you can stay there if you like. But what would be much better, I guess, would for you to come over to be.net slash Adobe Live, where you can ask questions in the chat, get involved. So you can ask me, Tony Harmer, or you can ask people in the community stuff so come along over uh to there you could speak to such amazing people as gareth and mazam and steve kiora steve carol is here in the chat yes oliver hello oliver and yes and many many more come along and join in with these fabulous people so today, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be putting together a dust jacket for a hardback book cover. So that's the bit that wraps around a hardback book. There are many hardback books behind me, and most of those have dust jackets on them. So that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be diving in pretty quickly uh, to this. Just one quick caveat as we as we get start to get the document set up. For the measurements I'm using here, these are based on the larger size uh, standard hardback book that you will find in the UK. Always, always, always consult with the person printing it or the person issuing the brief for the correct dimensions for yours. OK, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to create a new document. The intent here will be print. Dust jackets tend not to work terribly well in digital. And I'm going to add in five pages. You'll see why very, very shortly. Now, for the page size just here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter 6.5 IN. Now, as you might notice, looking at this, I'm working in millimeters, but typing in inches will be converted across for me at the other end by InDesign. By at the other end, I mean, as soon as I hit the tab key, like so. And this is going to be, let's go for 9.5 inches just there. OK, some of the books I've got uh, on the shelf right to the side of me, actually, are exactly those dimensions. For the columns, I'm just going to leave one on each one here. And for the margins, I'm actually going to bring these down to five all the way around. Very, very narrow margins for this particular job. Now, there will be uh, some other margins required for text, OK, but that's just fine for now. And finally, we need some bleed here. And as luck would have it, OK, I already have three millimeters bleed. That's around the edges of the page so that it, when it's trimmed, you get nice color at the edges and all the things you need there. So three millimeters all the way around. Very standard. And I'm going to hit OK. Oh, let's just have a quick look what's gone wrong just there. So width is right. That's oh, I've done 9.5 millimeters. Tut, tut, tut. Let's just have a quick look and see if the chat picked up on that. No, it's not a fold-out map today. Okay, so 9.5 inches is what I, was, what I was going for. That's why it was confused. 9.5 millimetres with 5 millimetre margins, not going to work terribly well. Okay, so we could do a document at the entire width of the dust jacket, okay, and then use guides to divide that up, but that's not the method I or many other people who are making dust jackets prefer to do it. What they prefer to do is use actual pages. So let's go and look at that. So here are the pages in this document. OK, so we've got those five pages. And what I'm going to do is I am going to go up to the flyout at the top right of the pages panel. And I'm going to come down to this option here, allow document pages to shuffle and I'm going to turn that off. That means I can start to drag things around and connect them to other pages to create combined spreads. So I'm going to do that with all five pages. Now, there are various different orders you can choose to do this. I've just gone straight across like so. So you could uh, do things with the numbers if you want, because InDesign keeps their numbering, uh, even though you bring them across into a spread like this, but you don't need to worry too much uh, about that. Right, so I've got five pages. Of course, they're all different widths here. So what I'm going to do, or need to be different widths, so I'm going to hold down Shift and tap P on my keyboard to get the page tool. 
And then I'm going to click here in the pages panel. I could actually click on the pages themselves. OK, so I'm just going to hold down the command key here. That would be control on Windows to select the pages on either extreme. And then I'm going to come up to the width field here. The page is still targeted. If you look at the control strip there, if you have that, OK, you'll see that it's very different. And I do recommend that particular part of the interface. So these are going to be four inches wide, about three and a half, four inches is pretty much uh, the way those spreads need to be. This one has become disconnected. So I'm just going to pull that out and back in again. That should, that's very interesting as to why that's doing that. Let me pull it to another part in the spread and then just shuffle these around. That should fix it. There we go. So you saw that it had detached itself. It had become an island on its own. Okay, but just reorganizing those pages worked pretty well. And that might well happen again just here, okay, using uh, the page in the middle, which is going to be the spine. Now, this is generally, you know, fairly standard, around about an inch, inch and a half, but it does depend entirely on the size of the block. That's all of the paper content in there combined with the board that goes around the side to form the hardback and the material on the board. So you need to always, that's one of the most essential measurements that you need here. So this one I'm going to do uh, one inch. So one IN is what I'm typing just there. Okay, now again, you can see that's become detached just there, but it's easy enough or should be easy enough to fix. Just here, let's pull these around. Let's get that into the middle. <laughs> and straight away that's gone off and done its own thing so what i'm going to do is just pull some of these out let me just turn that off and yes i'll just do that and then we'll try again so i'll just pull these out so let's allow it to shuffle one more time bring that down and out no nope, still not having it of course do it all day works perfectly well do it live suddenly almighty mess so i'm just going to pull some of these things around and get them into some sort of order like so and then just reorganize those that's just something that happens there we are and bring that spine back in to the middle and with just a bit of shuffling around those are all fixed and that is now ready to go so seeing as indesign seems to be wanting its own thing today i'm just going to tap v for my selection tool now might be a good idea to actually save this before we go anywhere else. So I'm just going to call this title 11 years. Jacket there like so. OK, and that's good. Everything is ready. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is actually the least exciting part in some ways, but the very, very important part, and that's to bring in the text. So command D to place. And I have a text file here, 11 years copy. If I just zoom in on that for a second or preview that for you, you can see that that's a formatted document with some information inside of it. OK, and I'm just going to turn on show import options. Hit OK. I've got no presets here for handling this text, but if I wanted to make one, I could. So everything there is pretty much OK. I'm going to say remove the styles and formatting from the text and tables. So it will take all of that away and just give me the text. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm just going to come along and choose any particular uh, part of the document here. In fact, I think I'll go over to this side and I'll just click just to add that. Now, if I did need to have threaded text on here, by the way, the order of the pages in which they come in would be very important. In fact, let me just show you why. If I go ahead and hold Shift here to go into Autoflow, Right. You can see that it's going to spread those along those pages like so. But that's not what I'm after just at the moment. So I'll undo that. And once again, just place that in one thing. OK, so I've got a few different bits here that need to be, <clears throat> pardon me, that need to be removed. The guidance bits, I don't need those. So this is the stuff for the back cover just here this these couple few paragraphs in fact i might just nuke those uh or get rid of those particular uh spaces in between rather than using that unfortunate term then i've got some blurbs here so they're the little bits that go on like recommendations for why you should read the book then some stuff for the back cover okay then the 
uh, biography of the author and other titles. In fact, I think I'll start with that. I'll get the author biography. So I'm just going to copy that out or cut that from there. I'm just going to create a text frame here. No particular worry about the size at the moment. I'm just going to paste that in so it's there and ready to go. Then I've got some other titles just here and the little blurbs for the back. So I'll just copy those out or cut those from the file and just bring those in and just drop those in place. Uh, other titles, that is something I'll actually need. So I can get rid of those. Let's bring this in. And of course, it's by your favorite author, Tony Tangent. <laughs> Let's just have a quick catch up in the chat. So we've got Kirsty in the chat. Hello. Is it a Just 17 poster? <laughs> no. Uh, but there we go. It's a book about spaghetti. Completely new to indie design. Well, Vicky, you're in the right place. So that's cool. We're going to take this nice and easy. Okay. Hi, Caroline. Good to see you there. Uh, then we've got some back cover copy. So this is sort of teaser copy just here. So that's the stuff that you get to look at that, um, you know, gives you a flavor of what the book's about. And I'm just going to hold down the command key on my machine. That would be control on windows and just resize some of these text containers just here. They're nowhere near in uh, their final state. Okay. And then on the cover, I've got this information here. Okay. So this is a bit of a blurb for the front cover, hitting the escape key there to exit text. And I'm just going to resize some of these frames to where they need to go. Okay. All right. So now we've got that content in, we can start to work on things like the margins to get some of those set. Okay. So, and putting in some other content. So what we're going to have, just so you have an idea, just doing a quick save as well to update that. What we'll have is we will have a background that comes in across the pages like so. And I'm just going to fill that with black. OK, so it's got a black stroke shift X to swap that over. So that content, in fact, I might even change the color of that. Let's make it yellow just for a second. That's really bright, and nice and easy to see. Um, and you can see that I've taken or I'm going to take this just over. So if I get my selection tool here. I'm going to take this just over onto the inside flap. So I actually did that on one side and not on the other. The reason for that is it, that's typical to do that. That's so you don't get a white edge that doesn't look very attractive down there. So a little bit of the cover with the curve across the board. And of course, that may change depending on the thickness of the board needs to go into the flap just so it has a nice, pleasing look to the side because edges down there would not be a good thing uh, just catching up in the chat uh, Evie says she loves tony tangent's books which is good oh dear and kirsty saying quick question where has adobe live been lately because i haven't seen it at lunch times that it kind of goes round and round between england france and germany at the moment uh kirsty uh, last week was UK week. I said England, the United Kingdom. Uh, United Kingdom was last week, so that it'll be back in a couple of weeks' time uh, from now. This week is Germany week. Next week is France week. But there's still the streams on Monday, so you can catch up with those. Uh, and, in fact, Oliver's diving in with that as well. Thank you very much. And Tim, too. So I'll, I'll just leave that to you guys. So we've got these things here. So I want to actually change... Uh, I want to change the margins for this to some degree. Something like that is not working for me at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my pages panel and I am going to select. So remember, you can hold down your system key. That's command on a Mac control on Windows to select things that aren't right next to each other. So I've targeted those pages. I'll make the pages panel smaller here. I was working on a bigger, bigger, bigger document. Uh, earlier so I need to just go back to this one and then you can go to layout margins and columns here okay and then I can change the margins here so what I want to do is I want to change now actually if I do the left let's see what happens there if I increase the left here to something like that around about eight yeah with both pages selected so I'll just cancel that so I'll do that one at a time 
there we go i thought it was going to give me inside and outside but there we are so on the left hand side here i'm going to bring that out to about nine millimeters there 10 i think would be perhaps too much let's go for eight which is <laughs> which is neither of those things uh, everything else on the other side i want that to stay five because that takes into account my board curvature there and then we'll go to this page and we'll make this one outside as well okay so that's all good just there so this is going to be on the right six seven eight there we are perfect like that so we've got a nice margin just there okay. and then what i might do is i might actually change the size of this text frame but then for the width i might take away the five millimeters that i'm using just to the right of it so if i do minus five there because the units are in millimeters you can see it's changed okay that like so so now it's much easier for me to manage optically and if i needed to <clears throat> once i've got that in the center i could always add a guide in fact let's do that i'll drag in a guide from the side here <clears throat> and when the guide is targeted i can just do the same here i can do minus eight and that will take me a guide out to this edge. Can you see that? So that means I know that I'm going to get things aligned nicely between those guides. And InDesign there helping me out. Okay, I'll do the same to the other side. I'm just going to drag a guide out like so. Click on it to select it. This time I don't want to subtract it. I want to add it. So plus eight. So that gives me that guide. And so now I've got the guides in the right place just there. Perfect. OK, so the width of this particular frame, so I can keep them consistent, OK, is 83.6 millimetres. So I'll just go ahead and drop that into this frame. So now I know they're equal, like so. There we go. That's good. Everything there, good just for now. Right, let's remove this big yellow block and let's actually start to put some stuff onto this document so the first thing i'm going to do here is go to my layers panel and i need a new layer i'm just going to drag that down to the back actually and just call it bg for background perfect and then i'm going to place a file so command d control d on windows and here i've got this 11 years background illustrator file i can show you that by just giving you a quick preview of that that's what it looks like a nicely textured uh, gradient there i'm going to do show import options just in case there's anything i need to be aware of so just looking at the general makeup of the file and it's only got one layer in it which is fine and so that's bringing that in i'm going to go to the edge of that margin there on the flap and i'm just going to click okay that's cool but it's way 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 too big I'm actually going to center it up as well. So I'm going to go to the control strip at the top. If you want to, you can use the align panel for this as well. But I have it here. I'm going to click here. Make sure that align to spread is selected. And then click align horizontal centers. And there we go. That's done. It's in exactly the right place just there. All I need to do now is to, because the height is perfect, but the width is greater than I need it. And just so you know, I always add a greater width onto the side just in case you have an alternate version, right, which has a greater depth in characters and pages or something like a large print format where you might want that extra region for a deeper spine or a wider spine. So what I'm going to do here is just change that frame and hold down the Alt or Option key so that I can click and drag that in so it meets the margin on the flap pages okay there we go you can see there's the edge just there okay of the actual back page and front page yeah okay and if you want to use technical language the recto and verso pages there okay in this particular spread okay so you can see that that's now down and it's on those edges so it's going to be the bit that wraps around and another quick save would be a good plan OK, so I'm going to go to my layers. I don't need to interact with the background layer anymore. So I'm going to lock it. OK, and then we can start work 
on all of the other pieces of text and graphics here. Let's have a quick catch up with the chat. Ah, so the next masterclass week. Oh, yeah, this is great that all of these things be answered. So thank you. That's really good. What are the dimensions and resolutions, etc., for an illustration? Uh, well, the, the resolution EV needs to be uh, 300 ppi for continuous tone work like this. Uh, and if it's line work, it needs to be perhaps 600 or even 1200 ppi if it's line work. Consult with your printer. They will tell you what you need or the art director, uh, whatever you need to find out. Uh, got to make a book cover by the 1st of March and not sure what size to make my file. OK, are you doing it all in one? If you're doing it all in one application like Photoshop, then you're going to have to find out that stuff really, really, really early. OK, right. So let's just crack on with this for now. So on the pages front, what I might do is I think I'm going to leave those margins there because they're kind of handy on the back page. However, I want them to be slightly different. So I'm just going to make sure I target only that page. Go to the layout menu, margins and columns. And here, five millimeters at the top is just fine, but I think I'd rather have them around about an inch all around. So 25.4 millimeters. Let's just tab through that and see the preview. Oh, I've just done that on the top. So let me go back to that one and link it just there. Yeah, that's too much. So I'm going to click inside of that top field there, put a slash in for division, and then a two. So divide that number by two, tab. And you can see that it's just brought me down to 12.7 millimeters there. Funnily enough, I could do that math. <laughs> I could do that math without that, but it's important that you know that you can do that. Okay, just in case the numbers aren't as easy to divide up by two. So I'm going for half an inch all the way around there uh, for people that like to work in inches. Okay, that's all good. So one of the other advantages I've got here with having this content on layers is that I can turn off layers if they're in my way, which that happened to be at the moment. And then I can start to work on this other content just here. So I can start to bring these things more into place. Okay, so we'll get these all where they need to be just for a moment. Okay, and out to the size they need to be just roughly, just for the minute something like that this one can come down the page a little bit i think there yeah, because there's going to be a photograph above that so we'll move that down a bit further this one's probably going to occupy a lot more space this one is telling me looking at the at the text frame here it's telling me that there's more content OK, hidden behind this and a quick way to look at that you can of course just scroll down the frame there and it's probably just an extra return okay but if it was longer or if there was more content there what you could do is command y or control y to go into the story editor and in fact there it tells me there's one two three four five additional returns that i don't need so if i just back those away so five new paragraphs started just there that i really really don't need so that's another quick way to work with that without interacting with the frame. Uh, Caroline saying InDesign saves us from maths brain ache. It does <laughs> save you from that. Uh, Tim saying continuous tone work. Is that when you what I put on the invoice? It is. <laughs> it is. It's a good spot, Tim. Actually, I'm going to modify the margins and columns for this page because I, I want to make sure that I've got... Uh, Oh, that's 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 what I'm going to cancel out of that and just make sure uh, it's targeting all the pages. This is a thing when you're working with dissimilar page sizes. OK, and you get something and no numbers appear in it. It means it's going to do it globally. And that could be uh, bad news for your workflow. So the immediate thing you do, open the pages panel, take a look and see if they're all highlighted. It's trying to do it globally. So I've corrected that by targeting that page. This time we'll go to margins and columns, and now you can see there are numbers in those fields. Just a handy little tip there for that. Now I don't want to. I don't want these to be linked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink those so I can put values in independently. Okay, so just here this is going to be 
at the top. I'm going to leave the five millimeters on the side. And at the bottom, I'm also going to put 12.7 just there. Uh, actually, do you know what? While I'm, I'm going to make the bottom slightly bigger because I'm going to make that 30 millimeters at the bottom because there's a piece of uh, content, not 300. <laughs> there's a piece of content that's going to need to go on there. And I would like to have that sort of visual guide. So I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see I've got all of these different uh, margins across this. Just doing a quick update save there, by the way. Uh, all of these things like so. And now I've got an idea of what's going to go into each page. And I'm purposely doing all, all of the all of this work first, okay, because that's normally how I do it. <laughs> but I'm also going to bring it so it all draws together nicely, okay, when we get uh, towards the thing being complete and outputting the PDF. Okay, so I've clicked into this paragraph here. Now you can see there are actual returns, okay, in between all of these paragraphs. All right, so there's an actual return in there, not a gap. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get rid of those. I'm going to select the three frames, okay, that have those extra returns in. And I'm going to do Command F. That would be Control F on Windows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an advanced find change that uses grep. OK, so depending on where you come from, that's either global regular expression parser, world of coding, or global regular expression print, OK, from the world of publishing. Okay, And that doesn't mean print as in printing. Yeah, it just means formatting it kind of on the screen. So at the top here, we have this query item. This has some queries built in for us. OK, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in multiple return to single return. Now, it gives us a bit of super fun grep code just there. What that basically means is if there are two line breaks or more, that's what the plus thing there, change it to a single return. OK, so I'm just going to go change all. And it tells me it's replaced eight of those things, which is super, super handy. OK, good. So let's go ahead and set the kind of main reading text for the cover here. So I'm going to click in any one of these paragraphs. It doesn't matter which one, uh, if it's going to apply to these ones. You don't have to select the whole lot. You can. Nothing wrong with doing that. But you can just click. So to make the best use of this, I'm going to use styles to do the work for me. OK, Echoes in the Dark is an awesome book, uh, Oliver. It's the sequel to Whispers in the Dark, actually. There you go. Everything's got a backstory. You know it. <laughs> So I'm going to switch to the paragraph options here. Right? So the paragraph formatting controls, because at the top here, I have an option for paragraph styles. Now, if you want to, this makes efficient use of InDesign. There's actually a workspace, so an arrangement of panels that you might want to use. If I go here to where it says Essentials Classic, top right of the screen, OK, just next to the blue uh, share button there, I'm going to click just there, and you'll see you've got all of these different workspaces they switch super fast so i'm going to be dealing with text so if i wanted to switch to typography you can see suddenly i've got a whole different bunch of panels down the side if i want to go back to essentials classic yeah then it takes me back to essentials classic so it's up to you which way you do it let's switch to typography just for now because you also have a paragraph styles panel just here as you do with character and character styles and paragraph themselves but I'm going to create mine uh, from, let's do it from the Paragraph Styles panel here. So I'm going to click the plus at the bottom to create a new style. Whoops, I'll just undo that. I'm going to hold down the Option key when I do it, because that opens, or Alt if you're on Windows, that opens this dialog. Moving down to the bottom left first, I'm going to turn on Preview if it isn't enabled already, which it wasn't. Okay, so I'm going to turn that on, then... I'm going to give this a star. So I'm going to call this one cover copy, like so. OK, I'm going to make it based on no paragraph style, just as a general point. And if you've watched any of my InDesign stuff before, or you've seen me doing InDesign stuff on here, you never, ever, ever base anything on basic paragraph, because that's a definition that may be different on other people's machines. So if you send the whole file across to a colleague or a printer, 
their definition might be different and that would have disastrous results on yours right okay next style is just fine we don't need to worry about that at the moment we also don't need to worry about shortcut and by the way if you want to put a shortcut in there to apply it there's a better way anyway but if you did want to do that you have to have a numeric keyboard keypad on your keyboard you can't just put in any old shortcut okay so i'm going to also select apply style to selection okay then we're going to go to basic character formats now i've already got these determined so the font family i'm going to use is merryweather okay so there you go it's the merry went whoops a daisy i need to just go in and edit uh, that paragraph style okay i didn't mean to commit that just at that particular time whoops a daisy why is that cover copy all right okay oh, of course it of course it is cover copy it's meant to be cover copy there we go we'll go back to that so basic character formats merryweather why have i chosen merryweather well i kind of like it i think it's suitable for this title but one of my main decisions in choosing type for publications is how many variations it offers me okay i need to know what is available in there because i don't want everything that to be the same weight or style so i don't want everything to be regular yeah and all of that good stuff now the size here 12 points that's pretty much standard for uh, novels if you've got i very much doubt you have but if you've got something like this which is called a typometer yeah you can actually measure stuff from existing books and use that but a ruler will do just as well so the leading there, the space in between, I'm going to put this 12 on 15. Let's have a look at that. Mm, I'm going to do 12 on 16. So it's got a nice, generous spacing between it. Everything else there is just fine. Uh, let's go to indents and spacing. I think most of these are going to be left aligned. So I think I'm going to leave it. And mind you, back cover books. Mm. Sometimes you want that to be centered, but I'm going to leave this as it is. Hyphenation. I don't want any hyphenation. I'm going to turn that off for this cover. Okay, that's cool. And yeah, we'll say that just for now, that's perfect. So we'll we'll leave that as it is. Okay, so we can then apply that to other paragraphs. Now, one of the ways you can do that, okay, is you can drag across the paragraphs. Or if you've got them in separate frames, you can actually click on those frames like so okay and then you can just go ahead and click there and it does cover copy for you now there's another way you can apply that as well which you'll see in just a little bit okay so this is going to need to be a little bit narrower here uh, so i want that to be something like that i think that's kind of good i'm just eyeballing this just for the moment Okay, and then I'm going to do the same just here and the guides in InDesign helping me out wonderfully. Okay, so we've got no space between those paragraphs at the moment, so I need to edit that paragraph style. To do that, I'm just clicking or double clicking inside of it and I'm going to go up to the paragraph style icon here and I'm going to choose style options. What's kinder? Did I say kinder? Uh, so let's have a quick look at the top of the muffin. Interesting. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Set that to auto. Leave it on. Leave it on tone lock. Very good. Oh dear. Brilliant. Right. So cover copy. I'm going to go to the indents and spacing here because what I want to do is add some spacing between paragraphs. So I'm just going to drop that in like so two millimeters looks kind of nice it's almost the size of a line of text and i could actually find that out okay so if i went for the leading 16 points 16 pt and tab through you can see five millimeters is what that would actually be and maybe i want that to be something less than that so it's almost six so i think i'm going to go for 2.3 just there so there's some relation to it okay cool that's working pretty well so and that's oh sorry that space before i actually want to put that in the space after this particular time yes yeah, so i'm going to pop that in there the end result at the moment will be exactly the same all right so the only time you really need to worry about both by the way is if you've got things called uh subheadings and inflow subheadings it means they're in the same uh, in the same text frame 
and you've got a heading or a subheading that needs to follow on. So that's where those things become most important, although you can use them however you want. OK, so that's that lined up. You can see that now everything they're using that style has changed, which is super, super good. And then we need to make a couple of other styles. So I'm just going to go here and choose this heading. Other titles by Tony Tangent. In fact, let's zoom in on that page so it's easier for you to see. OK. And then we're going to make some changes. So I'm going to do a new paragraph style. OK, and I'm going to call this a heading just there okay it's not going to be based on cover copy i'm going to base it on no paragraph style basic character formats here i've got another thing in mind so this is century gothic pro that i'm totally in love with at the moment this particular thing this only has a couple of variations in it but as i'm using it for a heading okay i kind of like it there's some googling stuff going on in the chat there but <laughs> no idea what you're talking about but anyway uh, so this needs to be perhaps a bit larger so i think i'm going to take this out to maybe 16 points something like that and maybe 15 that's a nice relationship between those two and i think they're very complementary leading i don't need to worry about because the headings that i'm using here <clears throat> will only be in uh, this particular uh, size and style so just on a single line so i'm going to hit okay that looks all right and i think that is actually a bit heavy so let's just, just change that and see what the other option looks like <coughs> pardon me let's just try that for the regular option and have a look no that's not heavy enough so i'm going to just undo let's go back to there if we go over to the other flap here what we could do is enter a line in here. So let's put about oops, the author. Very common to see that line there and a return. So another way to apply that style is to use something called quick apply. For that, you hold down the command counter Mac control on Windows and hit return and it launches this dialogue. Yeah. Now, if I type H-E heading as a paragraph style, arise and if i hit that suddenly that changes that's a very very fast way to do that so option command zero alt control zero to go out to that heading and then we need another style just here so what i'm going to do with this one is i'm going to select this line at the top i'm going to create a new paragraph style and we're going to call this one blurb not to be confused with the uh <laughs> the book manufacturer okay based on cover copy so i want it to have to have the properties of cover copy but i just want to override them for a particular reason that means if i change the font in use okay by cover copy or anything else like that this could update as well and it's keeping all of that information in here at the moment okay but that's fine i'm going to choose center aligned just there for that OK, let's just make sure that is going to if we go to general. Yep, it's going to apply to that selection. We'll hit OK. And now that's centered. We can do the same here. For the credit for the actual blurb, just there. let's just zoom in. Whoops, a daisy. There we go. So for this one. I'm going to create another new paragraph style. This time it's going to be based on heading okay actually let's not we'll base it on no paragraph style at all uh, so we'll call this blurb blurb credit so who said it gets the credit ah hello i'm sorry you're not late it's all good and you've got all of this on demand uh nemo it's all good right blurb credit just there applying to the selection so for this <clears throat> century gothic pro going to bring that back down to 12 points just there i'm going to use the lighter version or the regular version of that and for the indents and spacing i think what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to hedge my bets there and go center aligned on that one okay so we've got all of that cool all right that looks pretty good apart from there's a huge gap between those so i'm going to go ahead and go to the style options for the blurb Let's go to the indents and spacing and let's bring that right down. There we go. So maybe just like one millimeter 
or perhaps even less. Let's go for 0.75 and have a look at that. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Good. So we can go ahead then, find other instances of the text. So I'm just going to click inside this paragraph, command return. OK, and this one's going to be B for blurb. There it is. It's highlighted. Hit return. Then I can just do that and just hit return each time because it's sticky. Whoops. Stays on there. If it helps if you hold down the right key, it's tone. <clears throat> nice. Then I can go to the blurb credit items just there. Even if I make a mistake, it's just one down from there. There we go. OK. Oops, I didn't actually get that to the... Uh, that's kind of interesting. That's because I didn't do blurb credit. And it's not stuck on that particular one. There we go. That's better. Resolved. All righty. It's time to start bringing in some graphics, uh, such as the background just here. So we can go to layers and turn that on. Okay, now some of our text, we can't quite see it, right? We can see it beautifully on the flaps. Okay, but we can't see it terribly well on the cover. So we're going to need to do something to uh, do that. And I'm going to pretend now, here's this, this is the publisher phoning me up. Oh, perfect. The publisher has just said they don't want the flaps to be plain white. So how do I resolve that? Well, it's time to bring in some colours. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my swatches. I'll just switch back to Essentials Classic for this one. I'm going to go to the swatches panel. So these are the default swatches at the moment. But this cover project actually has some artwork in it. In fact, let's bring in one more of those things. Let's just bring in something here. Let's put another layer in. OK, so we'll call this one text. Just there. And then we'll bring in another layer and we're going to call this uh, artwork. OK, there we go. So we've got that. Let's bring in a file. So Command D again here and we've got a file. So we've got 11 years co cover graphic, which we can preview again for you just there. OK, so we'll bring that in. I'm just going to have a quick look and see what it's got. It's got lots in terms of layers. OK, so that's kind of useful. So I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to bring that in like so. It will take it a moment to render it. Perfect. There we go. So let's bring that in and into position. Now, if you find this is at the moment because I'm using uh, using things to broadcast this out to you and other things, you might notice my screen is lagging a little bit. Now, if I wanted to, I could change the display mode here. So if I went for typical display, that means it will drop the quality that I'm viewing down. So it will make it less processor intensive, okay, for the machine to deal with. The output would be exactly, would be the way it's meant to be. It wouldn't be low like this. This is just a preview. But if you're using stuff that is as this one is, like quite uh, intense yeah, on the process, there's a lot of information going on in there. It's not just a straightforward PSD, wherever there's there's a lot of stuff it has to resolve and render, then swap into that mode. Once it's in place, if you want to, if you need sort of a safety view of it or whatever, you can change that back to whatever display performance your monitor supports, and it will just go ahead and redraw it. OK, that's cool. Uh, I'm just one that might need to be a little bit bigger, actually. So I'm going to just tap E on my keyboard to get free transform tool, holding down shift and option. That'll be shift and alt on Windows. And let's make that a bit bigger. Just there. There we go. Something like that is pretty good, I think. There we go. I'm just going to switch that display mode again just there. OK, so just so while I move that into position. There we are, something like that. And then that's cool. That's working pretty well just there. So we'll turn that back to high quality display. And a quick save would be in order at this point while I catch up. 
on the chat. So Carol was saying save. Yeah, I actually have been silently saving uh, as you go on. The way to tell is if you see an asterisk here in the title bar, then you'll know I've not saved at that particular point. OK, so uh, but I have been doing it quietly. So we've got some graphics in here. Let's br let's bring in a couple more. There is another graphic to go on the back uh, page. So we've got here we are 11 year donkey. Not too worried about the file name uh, just there. And I'm just going to go to the edge here. So this one needs to go into the flap like so. Okay, And then bring that down to the bottom and well and truly into the bleed. There we go. Something like that is pretty good. That works pretty well. We can deal with all the other stuff shortly. OK, uh, and also we might as well bring in the title now while we're at it, while we're bringing in stuff. In fact, let's bring in all the graphics all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and view the whole spread. So that's option command zero, alt control zero on Windows. The publisher said, I like where this is going, but it's it'll be fine. You'll love it when it's done, uh, Oliver. OK, so let's bring in um, some graphics. I'm going to bring them in all together. So bring in Tony Tangent. Need that all important author picture, of course. Uh, oh, we're also going to need the fluffy imprint. So you need an imprint from the book. We're going to need the barcode and we are also going to need the 11 years title. Or oh, do you know what? Actually, I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to bring in the title first because you get to do a bit of choosing here. OK, so you can see that this has several different variations of the title. Actually, thinking about it, 46. So no, not really job to choose uh, here, but you can see all of the different titles here. There are different variations OK, so we've got it in a line, we've got it in a column, we've got it in text in a line, and we've got it in text in a column just there. So I'm going to go to the layers here. Now, what I'm doing, by the way, when I've got general here, bounding box, there is just fine. I'm going to turn off words centered and I'm going to turn off words line. I'm going to turn off numbered centered and I'm actually going to go with numbered line. OK, so it's all in a line. Let's just bring that in. Very, very big. Just say, I'm going to change that display quality again, just for the moment. As InDesign's not a, not a massive fan of live streaming some days, well, or it seems so today. I'm going to hit E to transform. The other way I could do this, by the way, if I had the regular selection tool, be to hold down my system key. That's command for me because I'm on a Mac and shift. OK, and then I can resize the frame and the content at the same time. There we go. Something like that is pretty good. I don't want it to go quite to the width of the graphic there. But something like that, I think, is working pretty well. OK. So I'm just going to pull that around until it's kind of where I want. I'm trying to guess what the optical view is here rather than the mathematical centering. I'm just moving that around a bit. OK, that's kind of working. I like the way that the Y is coming into that heart there. Let's move this quote up to the margin line there. In fact, I might just bring that up just a tiny bit. There we go. Let's change the uh, display view. OK, back to high quality. And we'll view the whole spread. Just here now we'll bring in that other content. So we're going to go for the author just there. We are going to go for the fluffy imprint. That's a TIFF file just there. We're going to go for the barcode. And that's it. So we'll go ahead and do that. So open. We'll get to the colors in a second. So that's just fine. Uh, that's fine. The options for the EPS is just fine. Hit OK. And then start to place these. So I'll click here to place the author photo. Click here to place the barcode. Click here to place the uh, fluffy uh, imprint there. Now these need resizing of course, into the size they're going to be on the spine. So that's pretty much there. Let's zoom in on that. There we go. Zooming in very, very slowly. <laughs> okay, let's resize that using those margins as a guide. Perfect. And then I'm just going to do Command Plus. That would be Control Plus, of course, on Windows just a couple of times. To get that in, bring that down. That wants to be roughly parallel with the bottom margin on the side there. And one of the great things is with this, this is a one bit TIFF. I can colorize one bit TIFFs in InDesign. So I'm going to go and click 
on the content grabber that's that small circle that you can see there that gets me the content not the frame that the content is in i'm then going to go up here and ah this is where i really do need those colors so let's do a quick save and let's bring in some colors so i'm going to go to the right hand side here because when the artwork here was made the colors from it were taken out or the main colors from it were taken out made into an ASE, uh, an Adobe Swatch Exchange file. So I'm going to do load swatches, and I'm just going to choose one of these. You'll notice there are two, but due to a mistake, they're both the same. So I'm going to hit open, and then in come all of these colors. And there's some stuff I don't need here. I don't need these grays, so I'm just going to delete that color group. And these ones here, if you look at the icon just to the right of them, they're all RGB, and these actually need to be CMYK. So I've got the very bottom most there selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and shift click the one at the top. That's just of this range. I'm going to go to the fly out. I'm going to choose swatch options. And I'm going to change this to CMYK. And then hit OK. And then it will remodel those. It's still the numbers that it says there. They're still the numbers, but it will have remodeled them. However, bear in mind that. Uh, sometimes, well, quite quite a lot of the time, the colors won't map yeah, to the RGB colors because CMYK and RGB, very, very different. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the changes we needed to do. So option command zero, just here so we can see the whole thing. I'm going to unlock the background layer for a, a moment, and we're just going to change the size of the frame. So I'm holding down the Alt or Option key and taking this out to the bleed. Okay, so it's done that on both sides, just there. I'm going to go to my swatches and I'm going to fill this with a light color like so. There we go. And it's just taken some of that hard edge away uh, from there. It also looks like, oh, I can't do that because look, my overspill from my content. So, and I don't want to resize it. So I'm going to have to undo that. Okay. A couple of times just to get it back to where it was and i'll actually have to draw frames for this so if i tap m to get the rectangle tool let's draw this out on this side like so and then make sure those two things are together that they meet in the right place and we can go ahead and change that color there we go something like that is good i can then hold down the option key Drag that across to the other side. Make sure that it goes up and it meets the bleed in both places. The machine being slow, and it's not a slow machine. It's uh, here at all. It's just that it's streaming at the same time. They've both got a black stroke on, so I need to remove that stroke. So let's say none. That's good. Quick save, and I can then lock the background. Nice stuff. Right, so... We've got those colors. We've got the text here for the title. I need to option drag or alt drag a copy of that across. I'm going to rotate that through 90 degrees. Hold down command and shift so I can resize. And I'm going to bring that in using those margins as an approximate guide. It doesn't matter if they spill over a little bit there. I'm going to bring that up into that sort of half inch area at the top there. So I've got a copy of that title. I'm also going to go ahead and bring a copy over onto this layout. And again, just resize that and bring that in. Sometimes you've got an extract from the book there. This particular time, it's just going to be that device and I can move that around. There we go. So the legibility of the text here, still a bit of a problem. So let's go ahead and fix that. And then we can add the author thing. So the way we're going to do that is we're not going to modify the paragraph style because that will change the paragraph style, okay, in the columns here, right? So we need to kind of sort that out in a kind of different way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a character style, which is like an override to a paragraph style. So I'm going to go ahead then and create a new character style. So let's select. This time we do need to select the text here that we're going to apply this to. 
We need to switch to our character options or use the character styles panel. New character style. Okay, I'm going to call this re reverse or light. Let's call it light text. So it's not actually going to reverse out. Basic, char basic character formats. We're not making a change to the fonts that are in use in the paragraph style. So I'm not going to override those. I'm going to leave all of those blank. I'm going to go to the character color. I'm going to scroll down until I get the color I want, which is this one here. Okay. And let's just preview that. Actually, you're not going to get that much hit for that. But if I do that and then select it again, this time I can start to type light and you can see it applies that style. Okay. And then I can do that to this, everything in this frame here. There we go. And everything in this frame. And then we can do some stuff to resolve the differences here. So we need to bring this one out a bit like so. And then we've got a thing with our quotes. Well, actually the barcode there is too huge anyway, and it needs to be filled with white ideally. Okay, so it's as high contrast as possible. So I'm gonna choose paper just there, which should fill the frame. Oh, of course it's an EPS, it's not gonna play ball, is it? So I will draw a rectangle for it in the right place. So M just down here, we'll draw that like so. Okay, and we'll fill that with paper. Ah, oh, I'm doing it on the stroke, that's why. You'd think I'd know that. Uh, Shift X is a quick way for me to swap those over and I'm gonna hit the slash key on my keyboard to get rid of that stroke. And then just X to make sure that the fill is in front. Good news is, is I can just go to this frame here if I wanted to, and just do shift X and it would then fill that. But however, I'm just going to remove that by hitting the slash key. Let's bring this into place. So just dropping that down in this corner here. Have a look at how we're doing on time. Three minutes. We'll be all right. We'll get the name in there. That's good. I'm not going to get to do any text wrapping, unfortunately, which is what I did plan to do there. But bring that in. Just resizing that. Like so, that's in the right place. The imprint's in the right place. We can also recolor that now. So if I just click, let's just position that like that. Let's go to the imprint, click on the content grabber. That allows me to access the TIFF itself. And then just drop that in. You can see now we've got that colored. What we do need to get in here before we close out is the author name, of course. So for this one, I'm going to drag a text frame like so. I'm going to type this one myself. So Tony Tangent. Oh, Tadget, Tangent, there we go. I'm not going to create a style for this one. It's going to be a single instance. So I'm going to do Century, Gothic Pro Bold. I'm going to choose a color here, something like that is good. I'm going to go ahead and change the size. I'm going to hold down shift and hit my up arrow on my keyboard till it gets to about the size I want. I want the lighter version of that. That looks too heavy. There we go. Nice. And then I'm going to change the relationship between the characters by tracking them out. So I'm going to go to the tracking field, which is just here. This value is tracking. And then I'm going to go ahead and just increase that value to spread that out just a bit more. There, yeah, like so. In fact, we'll go there. I think we need to come bring that size down. It's too big. Let's go in the middle of that, 45. And then just a tiny bit more tracking. Do love the tracking. Shift Command C to center align. Oops, I'm still in that field. Shift Command C to center align that text. Bring it down a bit. There we go, something like that. Let's view the whole thing. Now, other things I would need to do here, by the way, would be to italicize uh, this. I could create a character style to do that, okay, because it's going to be a title name in the flow of a quote. You can see all of that good stuff. And the final thing we would need to do would be to export this. So Command E, okay, as a PDF. Okay, so for print, like so. And then in here, we would need to export spreads. 
like that. I'm going to leave pretty much everything else there because that really would depend on your printer. However, it wouldn't need to be high quality print. Right? You would need to choose something like PDFX, uh, something like that to do it. Okay, make sure spreads is turned on. Let's do that. Don't worry about the overset text for this particular uh, example. But that should then, it's telling me about the, uh, oh, telling me it didn't want to do it. It's kind of interesting. I'll try that one more time. Uh, PDF print. In fact, I will leave that at high quality print just for now. That's normally the sort of thing you output from your desktop printer. Now I'm going to make sure view PDF after exporting is turned on. Not worried about the overset text. And that is running a background task. You can see the small thing whirring around in the top there. Uh, of course, it's not going to. It, it's not going to do it. Fail to export the PDF. Okay, it's something clearly having super fun over that today. But anyway, that would be how you get the whole thing as one thing, leaving it up to the printers and finishers to deal with the rest. And of course, get the author name up the side there as well. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, what's the reason for separate pages, Carol? That The reason for that is if things change, like the depth of the spine, then you can change those uh, things. You say, David Cousins in the chat as well. Missed that. Uh, fantastic. Sorry if I missed anything you had uh, going on in the chat at the top there. I did try to keep an eye, but I also wanted to make that. Uh, but there you go. They are, they're not, they technically are separate pages, Carol, but bought, uh, sorry, uh, Caroline, but bought into a spread, right? So if you look in the pages panel, you will see they are separate pages indeed just there right not things that fold it's a much more flexible way to do it and that's it uh, you are welcome oliver and gareth and carol uh i would have liked to have get those last few bits in there i've rehearsed it as well but there you go that's it there's a dust jacket your book cover try and uh, make one yourself all good okay uh, see you next time here on adobe live bye